Hello guys and welcome back to another video and today it'll be a KSP video but by the way I'm recording this on my birthday let's go sorry it took a whole entire year to post a video that's becoming a recurring theme on this video I leave for an entire year like your dad went to get the milk it's kind of sad but anyway we're back and today we're doing an Apollo style mun mission so that is where you launch a craft you have a command module orbit the moon or the mun and orbit Give a lander that goes down to the surface, lands, comes back, does its little thing. But yeah, so that's what we're doing today. By the way, guys, um, comment down below if you'd like to see any more videos like this in the future. I know I did one about a year ago. It was titled, My Last KSP Mission Ever. I'm not going to get into the whole KSP2 situation today because if you're a fan of this game, I'm sure you heard about it. So right now, we are escaping Kerbin. Right now, going into low Kerbin orbit performing our pretty standard gravity turn. It is a little bit of a steep one. I'm not sure why I did that, but yeah. So now we're pointing about fully towards the... Oops, I almost thought I actually blew up my rocket when that happened. So now we're pointing down to try to control our apoapsis because right now it's about 80 kilometers. If we were pointing in the middle between that blue and that black side, about 45 degrees, our apoapsis would have been shooting up, and that's not what we want. So right now we're just making a maneuver node to try to circularize around Kerbin. Here we are deploying the fair, and you can see the craft that we are uh, working with. It's a pretty standard Munlander. A lot of them look like this. It almost looks like the Eagle, which you'll see the reference to later in the video. So we're just circularizing around Kerbin right now, making a couple quick saves, detaching the craft, and now we're going to start plotting our Mun maneuver. If anyone hasn't played Kerbal Space Program before and wants to get into KSP, I wouldn't actually recommend landing on the Mun first. I'm just leaving that. I would recommend landing on Minmus, uh, because Minmus actually requires a lot less delta V, that's what we call it here, it's just change in velocity or less rocket fuel, because Minmus is basically a tiny little captured asteroid that is just floating out the outer edges of Kerbin. So with that out of the way, here we are having a nice maneuver to the Mun, a nice course. We have a periapsis of, of about 40 uh, kilometers right now, about 40,000 meters, that's pretty standard, that's about what you want to aim for, 40 or 30 is pretty good. But if you're docking, I would recommend going a little bit on the high side, because if you need to equalize out your velocities. Sometimes you can lower your periapsis a little too low if you're closer to the 30 side of things. But here we are, just circularizing around the MUN, getting a nice capture burn, as what we call it. So now we are capturing ourselves around the MUN instead of around Kerbin. Here we are, and we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of a circularization burn to get our orbit nice and circular. So now we have detached the command module from I guess the upper stage of the rocket, you can see the lander. Not sure why the landing legs are already extended, but they are. So here's a little circularization burn, just trying to get our apoapsis and periapsis a little higher and a little more standard. Now we just transfer Jebediah Kerman into the Mark I lander can as we are detaching and undocking, so here we are. And now we're just gonna lower our velocity down to about 300 or 200 meters per second to try to get a nice place to land. Here we are, just time warping down to the MUN. And using that little spark liquid fuel rocket engine to try to lower our velocity and hopefully not land in a crater. That is actually one of the worst things and hardest things that I've seen happen to people who are just getting into KSP. They land on the MUN and they land on the most rugged piece of terrain and they don't know how to get out of it. So now. Our audio is turned back on as we drop down to one time speed from the four times speed because I don't want to have to make you guys bear through the pain of watching over 15 minutes of footage just of me going to the MUN. So I have sped a lot of that up for your, the viewer's pleasure. So here we are reducing our velocity. And now we're just going to be real careful on time warp here not to, you know, crash into the MUN, which has happened before if you are not a little time warp trigger happy, you can just crash right into the mud and that would not be good. So here we are passing through about 500 meters of altitude and we're going to start what is called a suicide burn in rocket terminology. Basically, if this burn fails, you're going to crash into the moon. So that's why it's called a suicide burn, a little bit of a dark little thing. As we can see in the bottom right, Jebediah is very happy. It is his first mun landing. Not really, but in this safe, we'll pretend it is. It's his first MUN landing. It is July 20th, 1969, and Jebediah Kerman is about to land on the surfaces of the moon for the first time. Wow. 
what a what a historically important event has just witnessed. We're gonna go ahead and shut down that engine so no stupid stuff happens. Quick save real quick. And now we're gonna EVA Jebediah and plant that flag. Here we are using our little EVA pack. So yeah, just leave a comment down below if you want to see a video like this again. I hope it isn't a year until my next video, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I think my next video might be for uh, rescuing Bill. I some I don't know how, but Bill is just on the run in my save. I don't know how he's there, but maybe we'll maybe we'll try to rescue him in the next mission that we'll do. So here we are. Now we are about to plant the flags. We can prove that the moon is ours and not those dang Soviets. So here we are planting the flag. And you can see what I write on the flag bears a little resemblance to a very famous astronaut in human space program, just as Jebediah is a very famous Kerbal knot in Kerbal space program. The eagle has landed. Very famous. So right after I end up typing this, as you will see in a minute, something catches my eye in the distance. It's a little... Just doing some science. I still don't know what they're called, but they're like little moon rings. Yeah, you can see in, in the distance. It's like a little, it's like a little crater. So I just wanted to go ahead and check that out. Maybe get a couple screenshots or photos from over there. Maybe a thumbnail. You'll see when you watch the video. Maybe that'll be the thumbnail. Who knows? But yeah. So here we are. Of course, Kerbals are a little clumsy, so, you know, not a perfect mission here is Jebediah rolling around on the mun. And now I get to smell what that moon dust smells like. Don't know why I just said that, but I did. Now he's just gonna EVA carefully back over to the little ejecta crater formation. Here he is. And now that we are on this Mun crater, we can firmly say, we have the high ground on the Mun. So now we are just going to RCS himself back. I'm not going to make you watch through that whole pain. So there'll be a quick little jump cut here in a few seconds from when we are back to our craft. So here we are. Sorry, Jebediah, but your time on the Mun has expired. It's time to head home to the wonderful cities of Kerbin, even though they don't exist, and the seemingly undepletable and infinite population of Kerbals back on Kerbin. I guess that means that... Now, what I've always wondered, rain of thought, while I'm making this quick save, is that every single Kerbal has a last name. So theoretically, that means that they're kind of like Alabama and everybody's incested, so... That's an interesting thought to note down. <laughs> Just joking, but... Yeah, I've always wondered, how are they all from the same family? Anyway... Here we are time warping until our target ship, or our main command module, is reasonably towards us. We don't want it to be on the opposite side of the planet, because that's not the optimal way to dock. If anyone is here learning how to dock, you want your target craft to be not directly above you, but a little bit before you in orbit. So, not quite this before. I ended up making it a little too before than I wanted to. I wanted to wait a little bit more, but... It was fine in the end. We, we ended up docking perfectly. No quick saves needed, but they were there just in case any shenanigans went wrong or any crack and attacks happened. So I'm timing. So I'm speeding up this footage to, you know, times four so you don't have to bear me getting into orbit around the mun and all that. Quick disclaimer. I ended up getting really close to running out of fuel on this upper stage here. I'm pretty sure I had 13 meters per second of delta V left, which is basically nothing. So we basically drained this tank down to fumes, basically. We were basically running on fumes. So I was very lucky that, and very lucky that I didn't use up a little too much fuel where I landed. I mean, it's crazy to think, you know, you could have landed a couple meters per second to the right or to the left, and you would have completely been out of fuel. So we just switched back to the main craft, obviously because our other craft, our lander module, is 13 meters per second of delta V, so we're not going to use that to dock. So we're just using the main command module to dock right here. So we're just playing around with the maneuver nodes to try to get this to line up to get a separation of about, um, I'd say half a kilometer is pretty good for people who are trying to dock. Just did that quick little target burn and we end up getting a 
intersection, basically. So what you got to do here is you just got to play around with it, get it to go as close as you can. I got it to go down to 0.4 kilometers or 400 meters, which is very solid when you're trying to dock. Um, that's, that's a very respectable kind of metric to go for. Anything below, anything closer than a kilometer is, is pretty good. So we're about to execute this maneuver node to try to get our intersection with the lander module. Here we are. It's a quick little 35 meters per second burn, but I turned down the thrust on the main engine to, I think, 5% so that we could do a more fine tune maneuver than what is normally allowed with that powerful skipper engine on the command module. So now we're just going to go ahead and, and time warp down, maybe do a little adjustments you know, here and there. We're just going to time warp down until our encounter with the lander craft. If you guys don't know, if you do FN, F4, if you press that key combination, you can show all the crafts, though, so you can actually see where the lander can is. So I'm just going to the other craft quickly to point prograde to, or point prograde, to point target, or, I don't, yeah, I guess it's just called target, I guess, to get ourselves centered. So now, a little bit of an oopsie there, we're just zeroing out our velocity with our target. Point target real quick to get a little closer. And then when we're ready to zero out that velocity, we will point retrograde to remove that 30.4 meters per second from our velocity. And then you just point target down to dock. That's all docking is. It's really, really very simple. I know a lot of new players struggle with docking, but once you get the hang of it, it's, it's really easy. Just get an encounter, retrograde, zero out your velocity, point towards target, burn, zero out, and then just little pushes up the throttle and that'll get you into the docking port. So I actually thought we were going to hit <laughs> the craft here. By the way, I'm sorry this is in the nighttime. I, you know, that's my bad. I just wanted to dock and get this whole mission kind of over with because it was a school night now to get to bed. But here we are. So we are now docking with the lander can. You can see it right here. So now what you want to do is I'm going to double click the docking port because you want it to, to focus onto the docking port, not onto the engine, obviously. Because you're not docking to the engine, you're docking to the docking port, not to the engine. Just a little quick tip that will make you able to dock instead of not able to dock. I'm pretty sure this is also called Lown's Lazy Method of Docking from the amazing YouTuber Matt Lown. So. This video is a lot of editing styles that are inspired from him as he is the greatest KSP YouTuber to ever rule the lands of the Kraken. Maybe we should do a video sometime of, of visiting the Kraken on Bop. I feel like that'll be, I feel like that'd be a very, very, very fun video, but not for today. So here we are, just going to move Jebediah back into the main command module so we can go home safely and undocking the little lander can that will stay in low MUN orbit for the rest of time. In real life for the Apollo missions, that's not actually what happened because um, not of orbital decay, which is what many people think, because uh, the moon has no atmosphere in real life, so it can't be from orbital decay. It's because the moon has a very rough surface. There's a lot of mountains and a lot of craters. So the moon's gravitational force is not quite even throughout. Because of how low of an orbit they were, eventually these pulls and tugs from different mountains and stuff actually deorbited a lot of the different um, Apollo 11, 12, uh, 14, 15, and 16, and 17 landers from their low lunar orbit. And we end up getting really close down to the MUN here to get back to Kerbin. As even though I would love to build a space station and keep Kerbals on the MUN one day, that's not what we're doing today. So now we are just re-entering Kerbin. So I just want to say big thanks to you guys for watching. I know I left for a year. I hope it won't be a year until I come back. So please comment, subscribe, like. Tell me if you'd like to see more KSP videos again. Happy birthday to myself, and for the last time, until next time. Peace!